playing for two years. How much have you missed the hoopla and everything that goes along with the Floyd Mayweather fight, including uh, being in the ring? I mean, once you've been involved with something, you know, at such a high magnitude for so many years, it's, it's, it's more like repetition. It's more just like, um, you know, back to the drawing board. And, but, you know, it's been great to see these young fighters, you know, uh, you know, it's been great, you know, to, to give knowledge to the young fighters, to try to help the young fighters fight to become, you know, a household name. You know, that's that's really one of my ultimate goals is to take one of, you know, the fighter that's under my banner or a young fighter and take them to that to that next level. So, you know, as far as with me, I'm, uh, my thing was really just uh, here we go again. You know, I've been here before, so I know what it takes. It is a unique opponent, though. What's What's been unique about your preparation for this fight? Uh, it's, you know, same old. Floyd, you know, um, come to the gym, do what I uh, do, what I have to do, do my normal workout. But you know, when you, I'm a lot older now, so I have to let the body rest a lot more. I think the theory is that he'll be most dangerous in the opening rounds, because and part of that being that you don't know exactly what to expect. Do you, do you buy into that? That that's the the most dangerous time for you, not knowing what you're going to see on the other side. Um, I'm going to see a, a warrior. I know what I'm going to see. I'm going to see a fighter. I'm going to see a warrior. Um, you know, like I spoke on yesterday, uh, when I got an interview yesterday, uh, it, it was it was a great thing that Joe Cortez was able to go into his training camp so he can learn, uh, you know, about the rules, the Queenberry rules of boxing. Uh, I think it was a great thing. You know. What did you think? What did you make of Conor? I mean, you probably spent more time and saw more of him at the World Tour than you ever had before. What, what were your impressions? Um, uh, he's, he's a fighter. He's a warrior, and. Um, you know, uh, that's really it. I couldn't really, you know, uh, it's not for me to worry about, you know, what he do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I mean, how he fights, I have to worry about what I have to go out there and do. Uh, but I know um, I'm not going to overlook him, and, and that's why I've been in the gym, you know, pushing myself and working extremely hard. What if it turns out he is overmatched? Do you feel like there'll be a responsibility on you to carry him a little bit, to put on a show, if, if you are outclassing? Um, We'll just have to see once we, we get to that square circle, you know. Uh, my job is to go out there and execute the game plan. And um, like I said, I can't overlook any opponent. Even if it's Conor McGregor, I can't overlook anyone. Nate Jones said there's been a, you know some acknowledgement to the fact that he may come at you, like uh, he was saying in the, in the early rounds, and that you may be fighting, you know, for maybe the first time in a long time, like a real toe-to-toe -to -toe type war. Um, we'll just see. You know, I can't really say as this, you know, you know what's so crazy is that we always have our teammates and, and everyone on his yeah, people on his side communicating and saying certain things. I have people on my side communicating and saying certain things, but when it's all said and done, it comes down to the two competitors. You know, it comes down to the two to the two fighters, the two warriors. Um, you know, my dad can give me a brilliant game plan, but he can't fight. I mean he can't get in there and fight for me. Uh, same goes for Conor McGregor and his team. His team can't fight for him. So when it's all said and done, you got the crowd going for me. The crowd can be uh, uh, pro McGregor, but when it comes down, it comes down to two, the two combatants. The effects what, what, of age. How has that affected your training? Um, age, rest. Uh, I think it's more rest. You know, um, older. <coughs> and you know, uh, with age comes wisdom. So I think that it's very important to let the body rest. Whereas when I was a lot younger, I would train, 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 and never let the body recoup. Whereas I'm older and I can train two or three days, let the body rest a couple of days. Still doing cardio work, but still letting the body rest. So when I, when I do come back from resting uh, two days, I come back rejuvenated and, and with a lot more spark. Would it ever what? into your mind, I think playing out the one question, if you get into this and it's apparent early that he's not anywhere in your league and it's going and you could end it early would it ever enter your mind about giving a show because this is such a huge event or would you say I need to end this in case something would happen later I need well, to get it over well, you don't realize that when it's when it's something of this magnitude we know this is not just a fight <laughs> this is a this is an event you know it's a billion dollar fight it's, it's an event and I think we both you know owe the fans as well as the public everyone that's tuning in we I think that we both should give them excitement. Floyd, how did you learn to become such a master self-marketer? Uh, just years and years of experience. Just years and years of experience. 
uh, learning, you know, um, started with top rank. When I was with top rank, um, just learning, just learning everything. Wanted to learn different details. You had to learn about the Nielsen rating, just, just different things about the sport of boxing, about uh, uh, a fighter owning his own masters, you know, just different things like that. And just, um, I didn't want it to be, I didn't want to be marketed in a certain way. And um, a lot of times they say, oh, Floyd, uh, He's the bad guy. Well, it's not really that I'm the bad guy. If everybody's on the, if, you know, if we playing uh, kickball and everybody can't be on one team, somebody got to be on the other team also. So I decided to go on the other side. Who's the bad guy this time? Uh, it's not really. I mean, I mean, I can't really say who's the bad guy. I can say that August 26th, after the fight is over, everyone's going to be happy. Well, I, would ask you, I read an article that Zab Judah commented, and he said, when you get ready to fight somebody, you read their background, you study their family and all this stuff. Why do you do that? What do you get out of that that helps you in the ring? Um, I just really do. I really, it's about doing your homework, you know, like even like with Zab. It's not really watching fight tapes. It's really just knowing the person that you're facing that's across the ring from you. Uh, you want to know what that person likes to eat. You want to know what that person is doing when they're not, when they're not in training camp. You know, if they're, if they're drinking, how much they're drinking, who they're hanging out with. Those are the things that you want to know. That's called really doing your due diligence and your homework on the opponent, not just watching film and fight tapes. Well, I understand that, but what benefit does it give you in the ring to have that information? So if you know that I'm eating pizza, and I know, you know, I never hardly ever do, but uh, just say I that. Do. Like, <laughs> how do you? How does that information help you? How do you? How do you process that because and turn it into something that helps you in the ring? Even like right now, I know how much Conor McGregor is down to his weight. He's down. He's down. I think he's, he was a little bit heavy. I think he's at one sixty now, so he's down. Yeah, I mean, I, I know what's going on. Did you speak to Paulie? Uh, I don't have to worry about speaking to Paulie. Paulie's one thing about Paulie. Um, I commend Paulie for going to camp and trying to help Connor, um, of, of course, trying to help him step his game up to that next level. That's what it's about, you know, giving him that extra boost. And I'm glad that Paulie went to camp to help McGregor. And I think Paulie was, you know, uh, uh, for the tools that Paulie had, he wasn't a heavy, heavy puncher. For, but for him to become two-time world champion, he's a, he, he had to be a hell of a fighter. With the uh, thought process behind these smaller gloves, I mean, Seems like we're gonna get a knockout one way or the other. Is that why? Um, what's you know like, like I said, I like to follow the rules, the Queensberry rules. And we all know if anybody is knowledge knowledgeable about the sport of boxing, from um, one forty seven all the way down to one o five, the lowest weight class, you fight in eight ounce gloves. Once you fight at 154 all the way to heavyweight, you fight in 10 ounce gloves. But remember, some years back, some fighters, you know, some fighters really got hurt in eight ounce gloves. I'm talking about smaller fighters. So when I fought Ricky Hatton, we fought in 10 ounce gloves. So a lot of times people are saying about, we're talking about 10 ounce gloves being pillows. The only time I fought in 10 ounce gloves when it was pillows when, Oscar, when I was the B side, when I faced Oscar De La Hoy, and he chose the weight class, uh, he chose, of course, he chose my gloves also, so I didn't have no choice but to fight in what they gave me. And to become the A side, sometimes you gotta, you know, you gotta sacrifice some to get something, so that's what I did. Floyd, physically, you look like a 20 year old. How do you feel? Um, I've been working, I mean, I've been working. You know, it's just that this training camp has been a lot different. You know, I've been able to go to Miami, uh, you know, spend some time in Miami. Uh, I've trained in LA. I want to do something a little different, and just not really pushing the body so hard. Knowing my body, I've been working with these young guys. These young guys have been pushing me in camp. And what's crazy is this: I'm not one of those guys that's gonna uh, go out there and just post uh, post my workout or show the world what I'm doing. Um, I've been around the sport a long time. Everybody know what I can do. Like when you posted about the eight ounces, what what prompted that? Why did you do that this late? In the game? I mean, they said that. Um, I mean, I mean, I thought about something that he said. He said um, that he's used to fighting in four ounce. He's used to fighting four ounce gloves. So, like I said in my post, I want to I want to give you any advantage 
that you think. You know, for years and years, it's been excuses. We're just with fighters, period. You know, with the Manny Pacquiao fight, remember, this was the guy that was a rapid puncher, a combination puncher, but yet and still, I put him in a position to, to make him look ordinary. Even though he's extraordinary, I made him look ordinary. And I've been doing this for years to different fighters. And then they and even got people saying that, you know, we, we talk about the Canelo and Triple G, you know, I'm not here to knock anyone, you know. When I faced Canelo, he was a hell of a fighter. You know, once again, experience played a major key. Um, even like with this fight, you know, uh, when we talk about certain things, when I said on paper, everything leans, leans towards Conor McGregor. I never said that I think this fighter's gonna beat me. I said, on paper, everything leans towards him. You know, um, of course, uh, the so-called the so-called boxing, you know, Expert. experts, they say things like, oh, when a guy is bigger, he's stronger, that means he's better. What I'm saying is this, on paper, we know he's taller. We know he has a longer reach. We know youth is on his side, okay? And I guess everybody's saying power is on his side. But I'm saying IQ is on my side, experience is on my side, and I think not, uh, I'm just fighting knowledge is on my side. So I never said that I feel that I'm going to lose. You know, I'm not going to be in, I'm not going to get involved in anything if I think I'm going to take a loss. It's like me saying, yes, I'm going to invest my money, but I know I'm going to take a loss, but I'm still going to invest it. No, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going I'm to, I'm going to, Tell the people what I truly believe, and what what what, the, what it is on paper. Floyd, how is fighting a southpaw different for you in terms of preparation? People have said that you struggle with southpaws, oh, but you've oh, never lost one. Oh, well, last time I checked, I was undefeated <laughs> against whether whether you was orthodox or southpaw, I was undefeated against you. So I, I, everybody can tell to their own opinion. How, how is it different in preparation though when you're fighting someone with a different style? A fighter is a fighter. It doesn't matter. You know, with McGregor, he looks to come out. He's gonna come out and he's gonna keep switching. He's gonna keep switching. I know what he's gonna do. I already know. Like I said before, I already know what you're gonna do. He's gonna come out, he's gonna come out southpaw, then he's gonna switch the other way. He's gonna keep switching. But when you keep switching, all you're doing is burning energy. So let me give him some, let, let me give him a loan. Let me give him some knowledge so that he can see. You know, as you keep switching, keep switching, you're burning too much energy. If you get the eight ounce or the 10 ounce gloves, do you still, uh, do you predict a knockout? Um, If he's going, I'm saying that he, he believes that it's not going to go past four, and I believe that it's not going to go the distance at all. So he feels one way, I feel another way. We're both, uh, we're both confident in our skills, and we'll just have to see. Do you have to finish him for this to feel like a win for you? Because I've heard some people say, if he goes the distance, that's a victory for him. It is a victory for him. If he goes the distance, it's a victory for him. And my eyes are so it all begins with the rain August 25th on FS1, then the prelims August 26th on Fox.